Welcome to Heritage Stories, Visionaries and Experimenters, created by the Freedom's Way National Heritage Area. Each story introduces an inspiring individual whose actions, discoveries, and inventions have shaped social, intellectual, and cultural innovation in Freedom's Way and America, changing the way in which Americans viewed the world. They made a difference. I'm your narrator, Patrice Tedisco, and today's story is Lydia Maria Child, author, abolitionist, and first woman in the Republic. Despite being warned by female acquaintances that no woman could expect to be regarded as a lady after she had written a book, Lydia Maria Child became one of the first American women to earn an income from her writing. A prolific and talented author, she championed the rights of women, Native Americans, and African Americans. Her words shaped American history. Born in 1802 in Medford, Massachusetts, Child was the youngest of five children. Her father, David Converse Francis, was a baker, noted for his famous Medford crackers, while her mother, Susanna, remained at home. Precocious and fiercely independent, Child read extensively and harbored a deep connection to the natural world, qualities that endured throughout her lifetime. At 21, she decided to be called by her middle name, Mariah. By 22, Child was a literary sensation. Seven miles northwest of Boston, Medford's proximity to the Mystic River afforded opportunities for trade, including shipbuilding, brick manufacturing, and rum distillation. At the time Child was born, just over 25 years after the American Revolution, it was still a quiet country town with just over 1,000 inhabitants steeped in history and rich in historical lore. While Child's beloved older brother, Converse, attended Harvard University and Seminary, Child was educated locally at a dame school for girls and then at a women's seminary. Converse, who became a Unitarian minister and professor at Harvard Divinity School, played an important role in Child's intellectual development, challenging her to read and question literary masterpieces, encouraging her to write, and introducing her to the great transcendentalist thinkers of the day. She herself converted to Unitarianism. At the age of 12, following her mother's death, Child was sent to live with her older sister and brother-in-law, a lawyer, in Norwich Walk, Maine. A shire town of 400 families and the country seat for communities within a 150-mile radius, it was in close proximity to the village of Old Point, once territory of the Norwich Walk Indians, a band of the Abenaki Nation. Child's experiences here would inform her first book, Havamok, A Tale of Early Times, the story of an interracial marriage between a white woman and an indigenous man. Looking at American history from a distinctly feminine point of view, Habemach is set in the early settlements of Salem and Plymouth, Massachusetts. Using colonial historical material as background, it has the distinction of being considered the first New England historical novel. Not surprisingly, the book's controversial content garnered mixed reviews. However, this did not deter Child's literary output. In just 10 years, she would go on to publish 11 books while founding and editing the country's first children's magazine, The Juvenile Miscellany. Many of her early works focus on motherhood and domestic endeavors, including the popular book The Frugal Housewife, written after her 1828 marriage to David Lee Child, an influential journalist, lawyer, and future member of the Massachusetts General Court. Headstrong, she married David, an idealist whose various jobs and business ventures proved financially unsuccessful, despite her family's objections. Throughout their marriage, Child's writing supported them both. Unlike earlier English and American advice and cookery books, written for educated and wealthy women, the Frugal Housewife was written for lower-income American families without servants. Renamed The American Frugal Housewife in 1832, the book was a must-read book of its day, advocating plain living and frugality, and was dedicated to those who were not ashamed of economy. Audiences adored Child's writing. 
The North American Review, one of the highest literary authorities in America, proclaimed that no other woman in the country could outrank Mrs. Child, noting, For in all her works, nothing can be found which does not commend itself by its tone of healthy morality and good sense. Few female writers, if any, have done more or better things for our literature. In 1832, David joined with 15 men to form the New England Anti-Slavery Society. Lydia, too, would throw herself wholeheartedly into the fight against slavery, writing the book that would change her life and appeal in favor of that class of Americans called Africans in 1838. The most comprehensive anti-slavery book published in America at the time, it was enormously influential in convincing many Americans to support the abolition of slavery. While anti-slavery advocates lauded her reasoned arguments and appeal to basic human and American morals, others were not so thrilled. In the book, in which both the North and South are held to account for their roles in facilitating slavery, Child called for the immediate eradication of all forms of racial discrimination and openly defended interracial marriage. Pro-slavery groups and even devoted readers attacked her, not only for coming out against slavery, but also for being a woman who dared to comment on politics. Publishers rejected her. The Boston Athenaeum, where she was one of the only women given a private study, revoked her privileges. Her book sales dropped. The book's reception did not surprise her. On the very first page, she wrote, I am fully aware of the unpopularity of the task I have undertaken. But though I expect ridicule and censure, it is not in my nature to fear them. For the next three decades, Child continued the fight against slavery by publishing more books on the subject and editing the National Anti-Slavery Standard with her husband. Slavery was not the only injustice Child devoted herself to. Following the Civil War, she attended the founding meeting of the Massachusetts Suffrage Association and authored The History of the Condition of Women, a publication examining women's treatment and station throughout world history that influenced the next generation of suffragists. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, leader of the National Women's Suffrage Association, called it a great resource for the fight for equality. A household name in America for more than half a century, Child's influence was profound. Her writing, which included historical novels, short stories, children's literature, journalism, domestic advice books, women's history, anti-slavery fiction, and the literature of aging, shaped 19th American social, intellectual, and cultural life, so much so that William Lloyd Garrison, the famous anti-slavery agitator, hailed her as the first woman in the Republic. Lydia Maria Child passed away on October 20th, 1880 at her home in Wayland, Massachusetts. Even in death, Child could not remain silent. Her compatriots, John Greenleaf Whittier and Wendell Phillips, compiled her letters into a book and published it in 1882 in her memory. As we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, we pay tribute to Child's complex legacy of activism and authorship. Not only did Child ignore popular convention and achieve success as an author, she used that influence to endorse equality regardless of consequence. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Heritage Stories. Each story provides insight into the lives of individuals who were born or lived within the Freedom's Way National Heritage Area and were shaped in some way or another by their time here. These are individuals who have made a difference and were at the forefront of social, intellectual, and cultural innovations that relate to new things or ideas that the world, or at least Americans, had never seen before, proving enormously influential on American culture, making Freedom's Way a region of firsts in American invention, thought, and design. To learn more, please visit us today at freedomsway.org. 